uh, just start talking about uh, this uh, project. Um, it is called Deployment of a Common European Data Space for Cultural Heritage. And um, let's start with a few things about this collaboration between the uh, European Foundation and European Schoolnet. For more than five years, uh, European and European Schoolnet have been working together on strengthening the connection between cultural heritage and educational sectors. European, on the one hand, by bringing together professionals dealing with digital culture, culture and providing educational stakeholders with training tools and guidelines. On the other hand, European Schoolnet, by providing teachers training, creating and maintaining the Teaching with Europeana blog, and by promoting the use of digital culture in education, thanks to the support of its network of ministries of education. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the theoretical framework uh, of this project and uh, tell you a few things about the importance of using uh, cultural heritage in education and the different types of cultural heritages. First of all, which is the importance of using cultural heritage? Cultural her heritage is an ideal way of giving meaning to the future by providing a better understanding of the past. It enriches any learning experience and allows participants to deepen their learning and build connections with their own life. Cultural heritage artifacts can be a great tool to tackle issues of the past and present, break stereotypes and build bridges between cultures, generations and communities. Now, within a classroom, how can we use this? Cultural heritage allows to contextualize the ideas and concepts of a lesson, making it more accessible for students. For example, when teaching geometrical concepts, you can show students some Renaissance pictures and ask them to identify those concepts there. Using Art Deco tiles can help explain symmetry or translation. And what about talking uh, about electricity and presenting its history and Nikola Tesla with his equipment, like in the picture? Now, we have different types of cultural heritages. Uh, as cultural heritage is a complex system, often based on values and emotions, and uh, rather, rather than objects. Therefore, it can be broken down in different categories. So we have the tangible ones, uh, oh, tangible ones, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and it's also called phys physical cultural heritage. It includes objects, buildings, and works of art. We have the intangible cultural heritage, which consists of non-physical -physic aspects of culture, such as social customs at a particular time in history, social values, spiritual beliefs, and so on. And now we have digital cultural heritage, which can be defined as embracing cultural, educational, scientific, and administrative resources as well as technical, legal, medical, and other kinds of information created digitally or converted into digital form from existing analog resources. Like this one here, Amphora, which is a 3D object, and you can see all the different types of it and angles. Then, we also have natural heritage, which is also important of a society's heritage, including the countryside and natural environment or uh, natural reserves. And now let's talk about the different activities of this uh, project. We organize massive open online courses. We maintain and moderate the Teaching with Europeana blog. Uh, we run uh, competitions every year and we have some useful handbooks uh, for educators with uh, educational resources uh, that can be used in the different educational settings and uh, many kinds of publications now let's talk about um, each of them 
So the MOOCs, the Massive Open Online Courses organized, uh, offer participants the chance to deepen their knowledge of digital cultural heritage while exploring European resources and various educational tools. Uh, the last few years, we ran the Digital Education with Educational Cultural uh, Heritage MOOC. And um, this uh, course engages formal and non-formal educators. STEM teachers are part of the target group, as we can help them see how to integrate cultural heritage in STEM classes, providing concrete examples on this. The final goal of this uh, course is to design engaging and deep learning content for students, museum goers or lifelong learners to prepare them as active and responsible citizens with key competencies to thrive in life. The course makes use of Europeana's digitized collection of cultural heritage and content from the Teaching with Europeana blog, where participants will find resources in multiple formats like pictures, videos, 3D objects, and so on, and multiple languages, various tools, and other ready-made materials. And uh, this uh, course also introduces the learning scenario template and guide participants to use it and build their own. To help, uh, to help participants, the course offers a selection of videos with tested learning scenarios designed by educators from different countries. And a few things about the Teaching with Europeana blog. The blog offers resources created by and for educators. And we're talking about teachers for all subjects and non-formal educators. Uh, on the Teaching with Europeana blog, you can find more than 700 learning scenarios. About 240 of them have topics relevant to STEAM. STEM and arts. Um, moreover, you can find more than 250 stories of implementation, which are blog posts uh, uh, created uh, by teachers who, by educators, who selected some of these learning scenarios found on the blog and implemented in their own educational settings. About 100 uh, of these uh, stories of implementation are relevant to STEAM. And uh, teachers, educators have also the option to select um, which type of skills these resources promote. And uh, I would like to let you know that more than 200 of these resources are marked as um, that they promote STEAM, uh, STEM skills. Then we also have updates, which are blog posts on different topics like the environment, youth skills, gender issues, and so on. And uh, in these blog posts, you can find suggestions on the use of uh, different European resources to address the issues in class. Then a few things about the European competition. It is organized in collaboration with the STEM Discovery Campaign. It invites primary and secondary school teachers of all subjects, museum educators, and any other CTA professional, like librarians, archivists, curators, and so on, to find innovative ways of using European arts and science digital heritage in their educational activities and share their story of implementation about it. The winners of this competition are invited to participate in a workshop in the Future Classroom Lab, at the premises of uh, European School Net in Brussels. And of course, other awards are also foreseen in case uh, the workshop does not take place. And uh, finally, we have um, some handbooks offered to teachers. Uh, the first one was created um, last year, in 2021. It is called Cultural Heritage, uh, I'm sorry, a Digital Learning in the Pandemic, Cultural Heritage Resources Buying for Educators. Um, it includes um, learning scenarios, stories of implementation uh, created by educators of different subjects and um, non-formal educators too. Um, it focuses on eight topics, art, diversity and inclusion, environment, history, language subjects, music, philosophy and STEAM. And uh, you can find it in different uh, languages like German, Spanish, French. I could share with you uh, the links later on in chat. 
And uh, we also have the booklet, Teaching with Urbana Best Practices 2019-2020. And uh, again, there you can find learning scenarios, the best practices as created by educators two years ago and in different language sections too. There are also some other publications like videos we created with the um, European Foundation, many blog articles and some illustrated presentations uh, about the project. Now, uh, a few things about this year's activities. This year, there is a focus on the reuse of uh, the existing uh, resources. And uh, for this reason, um, there will be training courses in different countries across Europe. Uh, so our uh, ambassadors, national ambassadors, uh, will organize these training courses and more information uh, will be on the Teaching with Urabana blog uh, soon. Um, we will also have the rerun of the MOOC that I described you and it will be launched in February 2023. And again, we will have uh, the run of the European Education Competition um, uh, in collaboration with the STEM Discovery campaign. And um, for all the all these updates, you can uh, go to the Teaching with Europeana blog and uh, see what's new. And that was it. Thank you very much. This is my email address. If you would like some more information about the project and uh, what we are organizing, please let us know. I'm going to stop sharing.